Thursday 12th. Gentle breezes at northwest and north with frequent calms. In the afternoon, while we lay becalmed, several canoes came off to the ship, but kept at a distance, until one, who appeared to come from a different part, came off and put alongside at once, and after her all the rest. The people in this boat had heard of the treatment those had met with we had had on board before, and therefore came on board without hesitation. They were all kindly treated, and very soon entered into a traffic with our people for George's Island cloth, giving in exchange their paddles, having little else to dispose of, and hardly left themselves a sufficient number to paddle ashore. Nay, the people in one canoe, after disposing of their paddles, offered to sell the canoe. After a stay of about two hours they went away, but by some means or other three were left on board, and not one boat would put back to take them in, and what was more surprising, those aboard did not seem at all uneasy with their situation. In the evening, a light breeze springing up at northwest, we steered along shore under an easy sail until midnight, then brought to. Soon after, it fell calm, and continued so until eight o'clock a.m., when a breeze sprung up at north, with which we stood along shore south-south-west. About this time, two canoes came off to the ship, one of which was prevailed upon to come alongside, to take in the three people we had had on board all night, who now seemed glad of the opportunity to get ashore. As the people in the canoe were a little shy at first, it was observed that one argument those on board made use on, to entice the others alongside, was in telling them that we did not eat men, from which it should seem that these people have such a custom among them. At the time we made sail, we were abreast of the point of land set yesterday at noon, from which the land trends south-south-west. This point I have named Cape Table, on account of its shape and figure. It lies seven leagues to the southward of Poverty Bay. It is of a moderate height, makes in a sharp angle, and appears to be quite flat at top. In steering along shore to the southward of the Cape, at the distance of two or three miles off, our soundings were from twenty to thirty fathoms, having a chain of rocks that appears at different heights above water laying between us and the shore. At noon, Cape Table bore north twenty degrees east, distant four leagues, and a small island, being the southernmost land in sight, bore south seventy degrees west, distant three miles. This island I have named Isle of Portland, on account of its very great resemblance to Portland in the English Channel. It lies about a mile from a point on the main, but there appears to be a ledge of rocks extending nearly, if not quite, across from the one to the other. North, 57 degrees east, two miles from the south point of Portland, lies a sunken rock whereon the sea breaks. We pass between this rock and the land, having 17, 18 and 20 fathom water. We saw a great number of the natives assembled together on the Isle of Portland. We likewise saw some on the mainland, and several places that were cultivated and laid out in square plantations. Friday 13th. At 1 p.m. we discovered land behind us, or to the westward of Portland, extending to the southward as far as we could see. In hauling round the south end of Portland, we fell into shoal water and broken ground, which we, however, soon got clear of. At this time, four canoes came off to us, full of people, and kept for some time under our stern, threatening of us all the while. As I did not know but what I might be obliged to send our boats ahead to sound, I thought these gentry would be as well out of the way. I ordered a musket shot to be fired close to one of them, but this they took no notice of. A four-pounder was then fired a little wide of them. At this, they began to shake their spears and paddles at us, but notwithstanding this, they thought fit to retire. Having got round Portland, we hauled in for the land northwest, having a gentle breeze at northeast, which died away at five o'clock, and obliged us to anchor in twenty-one fathoms, a fine sandy bottom. The south point of Portland bore southeast half south, distant about two leagues, and a low point on the main bore north half east. In this last direction there runs in a deep bay behind the land on which is Table Cape, which makes this land a peninsula, joined to the main by a low, narrow neck of land. The Cape is the north point of the peninsula and Portland the south. While we lay at anchor, 
two boats came off to us, and so near as to take up some things we throwed them out of the ship, but would not come alongside. At 5 a.m., a breeze springing northerly, we weighed and steered in for the land. The shore here forms a very large bay, of which Portland is the northeast point, and the bay above mentioned is an arm of it. I would gladly have examined this arm, because there appeared to be safe anchorage in it. But as I was not certain of this, and the wind being right an end, I did not care to spend time in turning up to it. At noon, Portland bore south 50 degrees east, and the southernmost land in sight bore south-southwest, distant 10 or 12 leagues, being about 3 miles from the shore, and in this situation had 12 fathoms water. 24 fathoms have been the most water we have had since we have been within Portland, everywhere clear ground. The land near the shore is of a very moderate height, with white cliffs and sandy beaches. Inland are several pretty high mountains, and the whole face of the country appears with a very hilly surface, and for the most part covered with wood, and hath all the appearances of a very pleasant and fertile country. Saturday 14th. PM had gentle breezes between the northeast and northwest, kept running down along shore at the distance of two or three miles off. Our sounding was from 20 to 13 fathoms, an even sandy bottom. We saw some canoes or boats in shore, and several houses upon the land, but no harbour or convenient watering place, the main thing we were looking for. In the night had little wind, and sometimes calm with dirty, rainy weather. In the morning, being not above two leagues from the southwest corner of the great bay we have been in for the two days past, the pinnace and longboat were hoisted out in order to search for fresh water. But just as they were ready to put off, we observed several boats full of people coming off from the shore, and for that reason I did not think it prudent to send our own from the ship. The first that came were five in number, in them were between eighty and ninety men. Every method was tried to gain their friendship, and several things were thrown overboard to them, but all we could do was to no purpose. Neither would they accept of any one thing from us, but seemed fully bent on attacking us. In order to prevent this, and our being obliged to fire upon them, I ordered a four-pounder loaded with grape to be fired a little wide of them, letting them know at the same time by means of Tupia what we were going to do. This had the desired effect, and not one of these would afterwards trust themselves abreast of the ship. Soon after, four more came off. One of these put what arms they had into another boat, and then came alongside, so near as to take what things we gave them, and I believe might have been prevailed upon to come on board, had not some of the first five come up under our stern and began again to threaten us at which the people in this one boat seemed displeased. Immediately after this, they all went ashore. At noon, latitude in per observation, 39 degrees 37 minutes south, Portland bore by a run from it, east by north, distant 14 leagues. The southernmost land in sight, and which is the south point of the bay, southeast by south, distant four or five leagues, and a bluff head lying in the southwest corner of the bay, south by west two or three miles. On each side of this bluff head is a low, narrow sand or stone beach. Between these beaches and the mainland is a pretty large lake of salt water, as I suppose. On the southeast side of this head is a very large flat, which seems to extend a good way inland to the westward. On this flat are several groves of straight, tall trees, but there seems to be a great probability that the lake above mentioned extends itself a good way into this flat country. Inland are a chain of pretty high mountains extending north and south. On the summit and sides of these mountains were many patches of snow, but between them and the sea the land is clothed with wood. Sunday 15th, p.m stood over for the southernmost land or south point of the bay, having a light breeze at northeast, our soundings from twelve to eight fathoms. Not reaching this point before dark, we stood off and on all night, 
having variable light airs next to a car. Depth of water from 8 to 7 fathoms. Variation 14 degrees 10 minutes east. At 8 a.m., being abreast of the southwest point of the bay, some fishing boats came off to us and sold us some stinking fish. However, it was such as they had, and we were glad to enter into traffic with them upon any terms. These people behaved at first very well, until a large armed boat, wherein were twenty-two men, came alongside. We soon saw that this boat had nothing for traffic, yet as they came boldly alongside, we gave them two or three pieces of cloth, articles they seemed the most fond of. One man in this boat had on him a black skin, something like a bear skin, which I was desirous of having, that I might be a better judge what sort of animal the first owner was. I offered him for it a piece of red cloth, which he seemed to jump at by immediately putting off the skin and holding it up to us, but would not part with it until he had the cloth in his possession, and after that not at all, but put off the boat and went away, and with them all the rest. But in a very short time they returned again, and one of the fishing boats came alongside and offered us some more fish. The Indian boy Tiata, Tupia's servant, being over the side, they seized hold of him, pulled him into the boat, and endeavoured to carry him off. This obliged us to fire upon them, which gave the boy an opportunity to jump overboard. We brought the ship to, lowered a boat into the water, and took him up unhurt. Two or three paid for this daring attempt with the loss of their lives, and many more would have suffered had it not been for fear of killing the boy. This affair occasioned my giving this point of land the name of Cape Kidnapper. It is remarkable on account of two white rocks in form of haystacks standing very near it. On each side of the cape are tolerable high white steep cliffs. It lies southwest by west distant 13 leagues from the island of Portland. Between them is a large bay wherein we have been for these last three days. This bay I have named Hawke's Bay in honour of Sir Edward, First Lord of the Admiralty. We found in it from 24 to 8 and 7 fathoms, everywhere good anchoring. From Cape Kidnapper the island trends south-southwest and in this direction we ran along shore keeping about a league off, having a steady breeze and clear weather. The above cape bore from us north nine degrees east, distant two leagues, and the southernmost land in sight, south, 25 degrees west, latitude in per observation, 39 degrees 50 minutes south. <laughs>